Welcome to Perfectly Paranormal, episode 23. My name's Anna Schmidt, and I'm here every week to share with you true paranormal encounters and information about devils, demons, and dark energy beings that no one else talks about. And today I have three real-life experiences for you, which will outline how jewellery and furnishings can hold energy and tell a story. Sometimes a story that other people don't see with their eyes, but can feel with their bodily senses. As you will hear in our first account, called The Earrings Etched with Trauma. Now I visited a friend for the weekend and as usual we sat discussing our topic of paranormal, house clearing, ghosts, ghouls, all sorts of energetic happenings and as we're talking Julie remembered a pair of her favourite earrings. Now these earrings she said had a really weird feeling and she went to get them because she knows I love handling unusual objects. Now, when I hold these objects, I simply see what I can sense from them. So I'm looking at whether I see images, whether I feel energy, whether I feel emotions, whether I feel paranormal beings attached to these items. Items can tell a story about who has created them, who has handled them, slept on them, sometimes who has worn them. Now, Julie said that when she was wearing the earrings, she just felt like she was not herself. She was anxious, extremely negative and angry, and energetically drained if she wore them for too long. Now, Julie didn't want to get rid of these earrings, but she couldn't wear them either. So what could she do? Now, Julie placed the small, delicate metal earrings in my hand. And we continued to talk about the day's events as I energetically assessed these earrings. I closed my fingers over them as they sat in my palm, and I just waited to see what my body dowsing would show me. Now, at the moment they were placed in my hand, I felt a very subtle change in my third eye energy, in my brow chakra energy. I'd kind of developed a mild headache that was starting to grow, and my mood had started to change. I went from being very calm and just listening to Julie talk to starting to feel really irate, feeling a bit irrational, not feeling myself. And I looked at Julie and said, yep, these earrings need clearing, and I went to get my pendulum. Now, my pendulum dowsing indicated that the lady who had created the earrings had been in a really deeply negative emotional state when she was crafting the earrings. Now, these earrings were made out of recycled metal. They were truly, truly beautiful to look at, but they just had absorbed her emotions of hatred and resentment and disgust and paranoia. They'd all transferred to the jewellery and stayed imprinted on the earrings and they would then infect anyone who was wearing them. Now this experience is a classic case of being careful what you think as you handle items. The emotions, once I identified them, were easy to clear and there were no paranormal beings attached to the earrings. So once I cleared the emotional imprints, Julie could safely wear her favourite earrings again. Now let's look at our next experience. All manner of energy beings can attach themselves to objects. As you're going to see in this little funny retelling of a real life experience, from a family who had an energetic visitor. Now I've called this story The Golden Vase and the Cloaked Fiend. 
Now, a family contacted me about some unusual happenings in their home. We'll call this lady Joy. Joy had recently been given a beautiful golden vase, which stood proudly on the mantelpiece within the lounge room of their home. And since the vase had been in the house, the home's energy had changed, people felt on edge, and Joy's grandchildren wouldn't play beneath the mantelpiece, as this is where their toys were usually kept in a rather large basket. Now, Joy and I were talking through an online app, and I asked her to send me a photo of the mantelpiece. Now, it was Christmas time, so there were many decorations on the mantelpiece and also around their home, so I had to really look closely to find the detrimental object, because at that time, we didn't know that it was the golden vase. So as I zoomed in and studied the photo, this beautiful golden vase really stood out. I energetically tuned in more closely and without warning, I saw a little dark creature gripping with the ends of its fingers tightly onto the vase. Like it was trying not to be seen. Like I was so astonished. I'm sitting in my lounge room with my family around me, and I shouted, I see you! And the family just kind of looked at me strangely. As I continued to look at that photo, this little being gave me a quick look, and with a sly grin, dropped off the vase and promptly ran out of the room, disappearing off into the hallway. Now this funny little dark energy being looked like a tiny person about 12 to 15 centimetres tall, had a broad, kind of dark, dirty face, dark clothing, and from what I could see, a kind of pointed hat and pointy shoes. This little figure was not a dark energy being as such, but more so an elemental. Now, this little elemental being was one of the cheekier, mischievous elementals who likes to play tricks on people hide in their homes, move their keys, and then just sit back and giggle as we'd run around looking for missing objects. And with Joy's permission, I viewed her home remotely to look for this little energy being. Now, I've been to Joy's house, so I didn't need a floor plan. I simply remembered walking up the stairs into her hallway. I knew where the lounge room was. I took that right-hand turn and went up into the hallway in my mind and I looked in each of the three bedrooms. And in the end bedroom, I found this little energy being hiding under a bed. Now, with some gentle coaxing, I was able to get him to agree to go back outside and to leave the family in peace. Now, elementals sometimes come into our homes. They come in on objects. Or if you've got someone that really loves nature and they love gardening and they love bushwalking, if they're out in nature, sometimes these little energy beings can get caught in our energy field. with are simply entangled in our energy and they come inside with us. Now, they're not detrimental like dark energy beings. They don't make us feel tired like spirits do when they're around us. They're simply present in our energetic space, whether it be in the home or whether it be in our personal energy fields. If they're in homes, they're quite funny because some of them like, they like to take ownership of particular areas of the home. I had another little experience in Austria, believe it or not. I'm tuning into this home, this four-story house In the attic, this family had used it as a storage area. And when the parents were in bed, they could hear this banging and moving and shuffling around in the attic. And they knew there was no one up there. There was only them in the house and their one daughter who was fast asleep. Now, as I tuned in to clear this home, I felt a very sudden, sharp kick in my left kneecap. 
And like this does the weirdest thing. You're sitting there at your desk, you're doing your dowsing, you're looking at the picture of the house, and all of a sudden you get this sharp pain in your knee. You know, it wasn't from anything I was doing. And then when I asked about how this had occurred, because I was in the attic of this home, I was looking at the floor plan. Now, these kicks continued at about a five to six minute break between each one until I got sick of it. I'm like, initially I ignore them. When elementals get a little bit upset, sometimes they'll retaliate. You might get a poke or a pinch or a little bit of a punch, sometimes a kick in the kneecap. But this got too much. And I said, right, okay, who is here? There was a gnome. Yes, gnomes do exist. Now, this energy being was very, very upset that I was going to be clearing the energy of the home. It literally thought that everything in the attic was going to be moved out. Because gnomes love possessions. They're the bower birds of the elemental realm. They love their treasures. And the more treasures they've got, the happier they are. And it simply thought that by me coming into the home, he thought I was going to ask the family to clear out all the storage stuff in the, in the attic. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. I'm looking for paranormal beings, emotional imprints, trauma imprints, portals, black magic, curses, spells, all sorts of other things. I acknowledge that you are there, but I'm not going to remove you unless we come to some sort of agreement. Now, this little gnome was very determined to stay in the attic. Now, I talked to the people that owned the house, and they weren't surprised at all. They were quite used to spiritual talk, and they did believe, they had a lovely garden, you know, and they did believe in energy beings, nature beings, and so forth. So they're like, okay, so we've got a gnome in the attic. What do we do about it? And I I said to them, look, he wants to stay. He wants to stay there. He does not want to leave all the things you've got. He feels that he's taking ownership of them. Maybe that he felt that he's looking after them for you, but I feel like it's more for himself. But anyway, that's beside the point. So what we decided, we came to this agreement, is that I would talk to our little gnome friend. He was welcome to stay in the attic as long as he only moved things during the day. And he only moved things in the attic. He wasn't to take anything from the other levels of the house. He wasn't allowed to accumulate more treasures, is what I'm trying to say. Is that he was welcome to stay there, to be the guardian of the attic, and to look after all the possessions that were there. He was most happy. Like, seriously, I didn't see a response from him, but I felt his energy changed and I didn't receive any more sharp little kicks in my left kneecap. And I knew that he was happier, which made me happy and the family. Now, you're going to love this, our final story from Dean in the UK. Now, he wanted me to energetically check an old wooden bed, which made him feel Very unsettled. But boy, did he get more than he bargained for. Now, Dean has called this story The Haunted Bed. Now, Dean and his partner were due to stay with some friends for the weekend. And one of their friends, Samantha, had sent Dean a picture of this great bed that she had found in her favourite antique shop in this little historic town in the UK. Now, this was a place that she frequented many times, buying interesting items for their home. Now, the bed was a bargain find, and it was very quickly collected by Ted, Samantha's partner, and got the bed upstairs and installed it in the guest room, along with a few other items, such as a lamp and a bedside table, just to make sure that the visitors had everything that they needed for a good night's sleep. Or so they thought. (laughs) People have no idea what they do when they're bringing things in to homes from antique shops. But let's not get sidetracked. Now, Samantha and Ted had some friends come over to stay the weekend before Dean and his partner were due to arrive. And these people slept in the antique bed. 
Now, during the night, they were woken by a knocking sound. coming from around the side of the bed frame. Now, each blamed one another for messing around, and they spent the rest of the night just tossing and turning, unable to properly settle into sleep again. And in the morning, they didn't tell Samantha, because they didn't want to upset her. But they did tell Ted, who then talked with Dean. And Dean and I talked once a month online, and I listened intently as he told me about the haunted bed, as he called it. He said this bed had a very old, ornate wooden frame and was beautiful with decorative wooden carvings on each of the posts and a carved feature on the head of the bed. Now, this information immediately sparked my spidey senses and Ted had given Dean permission to share that picture of the bed with myself. And I couldn't wait to see it so that I could get an even deeper energetic feel from the image. Now, Dean sent me the picture and I made a mental note to look at it the following morning. And as I sat at my work desk, I settled my mind and I opened the image on my computer. What I initially saw was a small, well-lit room with three items of furniture. There was the bed with the wooden frame an unusual white lamp and a padded seat that doubled as a storage box. Now, as I stared at the photo, as much as I was trying to focus on the bed, my eyes were continuously drawn to observe this unusually tall white lamp. It was odd, like it was very odd, like it was even frightening. And it takes a lot to get my attention in that way. But this thing was truly the ugliest lamp that I've ever seen. And I will explain why as we get to our story. Now, the photo was on my computer screen at 100%. And I was looking at this strange lamp, kind of squinting my eyes, saying out loud, what is that? (laughs) I can still see it. I was trying to see what... The facial features were on this lamp, but it was just totally undescribable. It wasn't your usual lamp shape that you would expect to see in most homes. So I enlarged this photo and stared even further into this lamp. It had a white glazed humanoid-like figure with a tail and long spindly arms. Now one arm reached down past its knee while the other arm held the light bulb into the lamp. Now, the face on this thing was truly horrific. I can't even describe it to you, other than it conjured up memories from an alien-like or some sort of morbid beast-like face with twisted, contorted features that I'd seen in a movie many years ago. Now, I generally don't comment on decorative items because I don't technically have a style. So I generally keep my opinions to myself. But I just kept staring at the screen, saying to myself, that is the ugliest thing I have ever seen. And why is it in a guest room? Why is it in any room? Imagine waking up, seeing that in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning. Now, I had good reason to be repelled by this lamp, as you will soon understand why. Now, energetically clearing the bed was my job, but I couldn't, in all my ethical way, not clear the lamp too. So I started with the lamp. And what my pendulum dowsing uncovered, that I'm sharing with you now, was that there was a portal connected to the lamp, which had been activated by someone who had handled it, either an artist who had made the lamp or in a factory or a salesperson, someone in that process of the lamp getting into this house had imprinted it with emotional imprints, connecting to paranormal beings and also a portal. Now, there were five demonic level beings attached to the lamp's build-up of emotional imprints from someone who'd handled it or made it, as I said earlier. Now, they were large build-ups of rage, anger, instability, hostility, and sadness within the last five years. 
Once the details were identified, I could clear the imprints and the entities present on the lamp, and then the lamp would be safe to use. So when I did that clearing, I still didn't like the lamp. It is still the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my whole life, but it was energetically clean, and I felt that it was safe now to move on to the bed. So as I looked at the bed, it may not seem quite harmless compared to the lamp, but I did wonder what was laying hidden within its well-turned wooden features. Now what I found was that there were long-term emotional imprints from as far back as 43 years ago, which had attracted eight demonic level beings. Now, this may have accounted for the knocking that the couple experienced when they slept in the bed. The bed was also imprinted with large build-ups of hostility, worthless, jealousy, burden and sadness. Now, once again, as soon as the energetic details were identified, I cleared the imprints and the entities that were present in the bed simply just want to leave. When you remove their energetic food source, they just don't want to stay. It's like, nah, I want to leave. So now the lamp was clean. Now the bed's wooden structure was energetically clean. And when I'm doing these sorts of clearings, I always check and double check and sometimes triple check locations. And as I sat asking if there were any other energetic issues in the room, the padded seat which kind of doubled as a storage box, caught my attention. This is what the lamp was sitting on next to the bed. Now, it wasn't as detrimental as the lamp or the bed. And I felt that I would be doing Dean, Samantha and Ted a service by clearing all the three items. Now, this beige seat held three dark energy beings attached to the energetic imprints of resentment, burden and paranoia. And once again, when the emotions are cleared, paranormal beings are just like, they just want to go. They're just happy to leave. So funnily enough, there weren't any paranormals in the bedding, the mattress, the structure of the room or the wardrobe. All of the issues were within these three randomly selected items from a secondhand shop that had been strategically placed to decorate the room. Now, these three stories, well, technically four stories, cover many of the reasons why energy transfers to items and sometimes into places and how it can affect those who own them. So here are some of the other reasons why energetic imprints can be present on objects. Now, spirits of those who have passed can sometimes still be attached to their personal items and stay with those items for years until the person's energy is finally willing to cross over to the light. This happened with a lovely lady spirit in a house who really, really wanted her Singer treadle sewing machine to go to her daughter. And it had been put in the back room with all her other furniture. They locked the door. Then her family rented out the house. And the man who moved into the house had some interesting interactions with a lady spirit who was rather upset. So he called me and I had a look into the home. She came forward very quickly. She was very irate. She was like, I just want my sewing machine to go to my daughter. And I calmed her down and I talked to the man in the home. And I said, look, do you know the people you've rented from? Yes, I can contact them, he said. The lady of the house, as she wanted to be called, in death as in life, she said that she wanted the treadle sewing machine to go to her daughter and she wasn't leaving the house until this happened. And the family were there. (laughs) I think the family felt guilty because they had handled her possessions rather badly, not very appropriately, not very respectfully. And they retrieved the treadle sewing machine and it was taken to the daughter's house within a couple of days. And within the next couple of weeks, they then sorted through all her items 
and the rental house was then left clean and clear. Now, once all this was done, the lady of the house simply transitioned into the afterlife. She was so attached to that treadle sewing machine, and her daughter loved sewing, and she really wanted her sewing machine to go to someone who would love it, because they'd talked about it in life. And sort of joked about, you know, when I die, you'll get my sewing machine. And they're like, yeah, right, that's not going to happen. But yeah, it did happen. And she stayed until the sewing machine was delivered to who it was meant to go to. Now, spirits are one reason why energetic items can have these imprints on them. But also, as we mentioned earlier, building materials such as timber and repurposed window or door frames, just for example, When they're moved from building to building, the energy transfers with those items. So whatever's gone on in the previous home, if there's been energetic imprints absorbed by those structures of the home, then they're simply going to travel to the next building. And then the imprints are going to be present for those who are building that house. And they'll be there when they're living in the house until someone like me comes along and clears them. Now, Here is a really interesting aspect. Natural items. I've had two experiences with natural items. One was a tree and one was a crystal. This particular tree had not been appreciated being cut down. Now, the tree had been made into a chair and the chair was very lovingly looked after in this little country home here in Tasmania. Now, the chair was not happy because the tree was not happy. And anyone who sat on the chair felt really unwell. They couldn't work out why. People sent me a picture of their dining room. When I tuned into the chair, yep, there were six chairs around that table. And there was one chair was not happy. So what the people did was really lovely. They took the chair outside and I talked to the chair and asked whether it wanted to be returned to the earth. Then there was a defined yes. It was not going to be happy, and it was just going to keep pumping out these unhappy emotions into anyone who sat on it. So this family were a little bit distraught about the six chairs going to five, but they weren't going to be able to sit on it. So they might as well give the chair what it wanted, give the tree what it wanted. So the chair was lovingly pulled apart and buried in the earth in their backyard. And what they did was they planted a new tree on top. I thought that was a lovely touch. Now, the second item was a crystal. This was another Tasmanian experience. A friend of mine is a crystal seller and she bought a crystal, very rare crystal from the United States. When the crystal came into her home, she started having nightmares. And she didn't put it down to the crystal, but when I tuned into her home through the process of doing my protocol with my house clearing, there was a room out the back of her house where she stored all her crystals, things that she was selling as a showroom, but also a storeroom. And I said to her, look, in your storeroom, what I'm seeing in my mind is a metal. Now, it's a mineral. It kept correcting me. I kept saying the wrong thing and the item kept correcting me. It's a mineral and it doesn't want to be here. It's grey. It's not shiny, but it's, it looks like it's in its raw state. It's kind of grey, grey with little silver flecks through it. And she's like, oh, I know what that is. This crystal stone mineral, whatever you want to call it, didn't want to be here. It was very upset that it had been dug up. So she lives in a very lush, dense area of Tasmania. So she went out into the bush. She made this beautiful sort of little pit for this crystal stone mineral. I keep calling it the wrong thing. And she did a lovely little ceremony to return it to the earth. And her sleep after that returned to normal. Now, whether the Mineral was trying to communicate with her through her dreams. That is a big possibility. You know, so it's using your awareness and being understanding about these things is that sometimes natural items just don't want to be removed from the earth. Now, the last aspect we're going to look at is black magic. Black magic 
curses, spells, dark intentions, satanic practices. These activities can imprint items with negative energy. And wherever these items travel around the world, they carry that energy with them. Now, if they've been cursed to hurt a certain person, that's bad enough as it is. But when that item then gets diverted off to other people, that is just doubling, tripling, quadrupling the effect that is having on everybody. I've actually dealt with some items that had black magic attached to them. This is an area of energy work that I was thrown into very abruptly at the beginning of 2023, and I've learnt so much about it. So these items take on those energetic imprints and they just move from owner to owner and they become more and more toxic and energetically harmful to people, pets and locations. And they simply have to be energetically cleared. So I hope you've enjoyed the stories today and learned something new about energetic imprints and how it affects people and the environment. So in episode 24, we're talking pets and their sensitivity to energy in the home and how they can absorb positive and negative energy from their owners. And I have three real life experiences for you as prime examples of energetic presence felt by animals and also energetic attachment. So thank you for joining me today. And don't forget, if you want to share your paranormal experiences or you've got a question, you can email me at spiritualbeing44 at gmail.com. For information on paranormal house clearing, you can visit my website, Spiritual Being. You will find the address in the description box. And I look forward to sharing this spooky space again with you next week. And remember, life is perfectly paranormal. <laughs>